Hey everyone! Today we're going to be making some minecart tracks to continue on our cavern journey. So to start with, I'm going to open up my 25mm base and size the minecarts according to that. If you're wondering how I made this base, I simply downloaded one of MZ4250's amazing models off of his Patreon or his Shapeways storefront, and then just copied the base. He has a ton of amazing models up here. I highly suggest checking them out if you're into D&D or anything miniature. Thank you very much, Mr. MZ4250. Back to the minecart tracks. Simply make minecart tracks. I have uh, been very busy, so I was like, hey bro, can you make me some minecart tracks? And he was like, what? And I'm like, just just the tracks that you you would put a minecart on? He was like, so you want a minecart and all the other stuff? And I was like, yeah, I'd take that, but I don't have time to print all that right now. I just have time to print the, the minecart tracks. So if you want to make those and send them to me, then I'd make a video on it and stuff like that. And he was like, yeah, sure. And he sent me so many, <laughs> so many things. But we did eventually just kind of uh, settle on very simple minecart tracks that were very nice. It, it was, his turnaround time was insane. Uh, it took him way less, way less time than it would have taken me. And obviously he uses like, you know things like modifiers and stuff appropriately, whereas I cannot. I have no idea uh, how to do any of this. I saw him add a cube there. Could probably do that. I might be able to muddle my way through <laughs> making this, uh, but certainly not in the method that he did. I always find it surprising how much it actually does help to watch somebody else just make something, though, before when I was watching our episodes, and I had like a, a rough idea of what I was doing. Maybe somebody uh, here has seen me try to make a bottle, <laughs> in, and I had like the lowest idea of what I was doing. But while I was editing the videos, I have, you know, enough knowledge to be able to edit the videos. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, my voice line goes here, because that's what's happening. That's about as far as my knowledge of Blender had gone. So when I was starting to do the sculpting and stuff like that, I was like, oh, this is what that means. But I can't, there's so much going on in Blender, I could not recall anything. So just watching him back making this is actually incredibly helpful to me because this is like the first time that I would have real applicable knowledge of what was happening. And that, that was kind of fun to me. So we had discussed a few variations of minecart tracks. One had like the ground and stuff like that attached to it, but that actually became a little too much to print, I thought. It would be very thick. Coming from the guy who made the cavern walls and printed them, I was like, yeah, no, I don't know. That's That seems like a, a lot of resin and it's a very thick like base. And I thought this would probably go easier if I have any sort of like textured mat or like a, a picture of a mine floor that has like the 25 millimeter grid or inch by inch grid on it these would lay nicely across them and would be able to be like moved on so if we had a mine cart that say fit a 25 millimeter base you could like have a person in the mine cart going down i thought it would be fun i i think that would be a really cool just addition to the D, &D tabletop Watching him model now seems like some kind of black magic, though, because of how just quickly these things come together when I now know what it really truly takes. I had, a, I had an idea of what it took, and I always appreciated the fact that he was good at modeling, but now that I've been really trying to do a whole lot of different stuff, I'm like, holy crap, this is such a such a steep learning curve and he makes it look so easy. So we decided for the time being to go with simply a straight and a 90 degree turn. We're also probably going to make, you know, track connections, mine carts, and those dead ends. Plus, maybe I'll get in there and sculpt on the planks of wood a little bit to make them look a little bit more interesting. But, these came out really well, actually. After printing them, they look amazing, and they came out very clean. So, I had to move where my 3D printer was, uh, and now it's in a place that's, like, unfilmable, so... It printed. <laughs> this is where I would show the printing process. Actually, I can just throw in something else printing, probably, very quickly. It printed. So, for the straight tracks, I just stacked three of them, 
and for the 90s, I had two. They came out really clean, the supports came off very easily, and it worked. And now here's them laid out. Ooh. <laughs> they, they, they're pretty fun to me. I will post this up on our Patreon. For anybody who's interested, I will include the 90 and the straight blend files as well as the STLs. And I'll even toss up the supported ones because they came out really well for me. So maybe you'll have luck with those as well. Real quick, I've seen a few comments on filament printing and I, the fact that I haven't touched on filament printing. I don't know anything about filament printing. I own the resin vat printer. So that's obviously if you even want to call it an area of expertise, <laughs> I can make things work. So I I don't really know. I'm not like a professional in any way of, of, for any of this. So I'm just a dude making stuff and sharing it. I don't have any idea what's film and printing, what, what's going on there. Sorry. All right. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. If you want the models, they're up on our Patreon as well as all the other cavern stuff I've made so far. So check it out if you want to. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye. Sorry, this one was a little rushed. Ran out of time. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.